The formation of most of the world's caves results in one way or another from the action of surface waters. Rainwater, or water produced by melting ice, is acidic and loaded with minerals. It creeps into the cracks in the ground and begins a long journey underground. Caves only form in rock that is favorable to their appearance. That rock includes limestone. It is soft and vulnerable to acidity. The mechanical force of the water that arrives from the surface attacks the limestone, and its acidity dissolves it. Each drop that falls from the vault, each dribble of water that trickles down the cave wall leaves a minute mineral trace to add to those left previously. Thus, drop by drop, the underground world is mineralized. This process takes place over thousands of years. So it is that fantastic underground cathedrals are born. Their Baroque architecture is a result of the whims of rock and water. Thus are carved the curtains, the pillars, the forests of columns that decorate the richest caves. In a world where there is only rock and water, the animal world as we know it meets its limits. Here begins the reign of another life form. A few years ago, after inching through a very narrow passageway for several hours, a team of speleologists headed by Michel Ronda made an intriguing discovery. Sensing that they were in the presence of a hitherto unknown mineral formation, the team sealed the entrance to the cave to prevent any degradation and alerted Sylvain Monteux, former member of their speleology group, now a biologist at Umeå University in Sweden. What we call concretions is simply the limestone contained in the water which crystallizes when the water evaporates and which gives these shapes to lactites and stalagmites as well as flowstone deposits on the rock or in the draperies, for instance, which are also pretty famous. But they can also take other forms and follow, for example, a, a draft or the agitation of air molecules. These are called eccentrics. As their name indicates, eccentrics grow chaotically, whereas conventional concretions are structured by gravity. Their absence of orientation is explained by the fact that at certain spots in a cave, the forces of gravity, capillarity, and crystallization are equivalent. As a consequence, they cancel each other out, and the concretions that develop in those spots grow randomly. The concretions discovered by Michel Ronda's group are certainly eccentrics, but they present disturbing characteristics. The strands have a greater diameter to those usually seen, and in places, develop against gravity. Strangely, their arborescence evokes plants, but they're mineral plants. The cavers face a conundrum. We see these structures that look rather like bridges. So typically we see this concretion climb up and touch the ceiling and then branch off to join another point on the ceiling and continue like that. They're really unusual structures. We see these bridges on numerous occasions. Everywhere these colonies exist. 
It's hard to believe all this happens by chance. So now we're starting to think that it really was organic. In an attempt to shed some light on the mystery, Sylvain Monteux decides to take a sample and examine it in the scanner. This is the scanner result. There are only two colors, orange for anything organic and yellow for anything mineral. So we can see that they're completely embedded in one another. There's organic at the surface, there's organic inside, but there's also mineral inside, not just inside the tube. So we observe that it's always totally mixed. It's not just a random presence of bacteria in the concretion. They're present at the origin of the structure. Either at the origin or they transformed it. We can't really say yet, but they're clearly involved in making these tubes. If we trust the scanner results, neither water flows, gravity, nor droughts were the cause of this unknown type of concretions. It was millions of bacteria. They change the rock into calcite, and over the course of their development, form these amazing mineral trees. However, there is one intriguing question. Why do some branches climb towards the ceiling? Just above these concretions, there's a darker layer in which we find heavy metals, such as copper, uranium, and zinc. And we also find lots of sulfur. Seeing this visible layer at this spot and the concretions climbing towards the ceiling suggested to us that the bacteria are trying to reach the ceiling to feed on this sulfur. And it's known that bacteria know how to use sulfur to grow. One structural feature also attracted the scientists' attention. At several spots, some tubes are connected to others. We know that bacteria can communicate with each other at a very basic level. It's called quorum sensing. So it's possible that these bacteria, which are capable of moving around in this environment, in this very calm underground area, would be able to feel these molecules from a greater distance, and therefore of heading towards one another. DNA tests of these concretions confirm the presence of the bacteria detected by the scanner, and they also testify to a great diversity. 30% of them belong to a non-listed species, Until recently, we weren't necessarily interested in what was living in the rock, but we realized that the rock isn't an empty, dead environment. So this frontier that caves represent between the organic and the mineral could in fact be a gateway to this living underground environment, which is gigantic. Work on these bacteria is just beginning but it is proving very promising for the study of the organization of underground life.